You know what happens when you don't choose the right thing? Affliction comes. Affliction. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but those who choose the right thing, the Lord will deliver out of all of them. That's why many people stay in their afflictions so long. Some people stay in their afflictions forever. Because <laughs> they refuse to do the right thing. Oh, glory. What a time and season we are in. I'm telling you, what a time and season we are in. Things are about to explode. Everyone tell your neighbor, explode time. <laughs> I want to go to the book of Daniel chapter 10 for a moment this morning. Glory. Is everybody there? Amen. Daniel 10. This is such a, a prophetic time and word. One of the things in fulfilling prophecy, which we are doing right now, there's a fulfillment of prophecy. You have God's will in man's time. See, God's will is God's time. But there is God's will that he tries to get to match up with man's time on an individual basis. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father... If it's possible, let this cup pass me by, but not my will, your will. Why? Because he said he knew that he had come. There was a purpose for him coming because his will associated with his time, he was trying to match it with God's will because it was God's time. That's how prophetic things release in this realm. So for you and I to walk correctly... And fulfilling prophecy as an individual or destiny, you must walk according to his will and his time and not your own. Does everybody get it? So again, so many times we're, we think we're battling in the arena, of course, demonic forces. The reason why we're battling in demonic forces is they're trying to sway you from delaying in God's time or going ahead of him. And when you do either one of those, you miss. Because God's will has always got a specific, appointed, prophetic release times for your life. And then there's a prophetic release time for a nation and the world. Everything must fall in line in whatever we do. That's why he says, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says. Because so many people are moving out of God's time and they miss the opportunities and when you miss an opportunity of God's perfect time you get mixed messages does everybody understand what I'm saying you get mixed messages and miss mixed messages because of the battle in the arena of the demonic or the soulish arena because in the soul where you're always battling, because that's where the battle is at, your mind, will, emotions, and imaginations, and conscience. When you're out of God's time, that means the soul is in control and not the spirit. So what the soul wants, wants a word from God or something from somewhere to bring fulfillment, but it really is false. It's incorrect because it's too mixed. So what it does is puff up the soul and promotes pride and arrogance and can move a person out of position real quick. Does everybody understand that? If I was to ask someone, if I was to say right now, if you are sick in this room, I want you to come up and get prayed for. And you came up and you weren't sick, you would not get what you came for. Because it wasn't God's appointed time for you to get it. If I was to call everybody that was a pastor to come up and get prayed for right now, 
and you haven't been ordained yet by God in a, as a pastor, and you came up and got prayed for you to get a mixed message. But if I asked anybody who wanted to be prayed for who came up, you would receive the correct message. Does everybody understand? Because everything must fall directly in what God's will is and not the soulish will. Amen. Or you miss every time. You'll have a mixed message, and that mixed message will come out and promote pride. Uh -huh. Like, I'm somebody. When none of us are nothing. Amen. And that's how God does it prophetically with times and seasons and everything else that he does. Why? Because they are pre-scheduled, appointed moments, visitations, events, and awakenings for all mankind. But there is that special time for you and God. That's why he says, who do you say that I am? Not what everybody else says. Who do you say that I am? In Daniel chapter 10, in verse 1, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belhazar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. In other words, God was going to release a message to Daniel, but it wasn't going to become, come to pass yet because the appointed time was down in the future, not now. But Daniel would want to get understanding of this. Now, it's so powerful because King Cyrus, he was a pagan king. <laughs> but he rescued the Jews. He served God. And God acknowledged him as his servant because he did all the right things. So he was not a Jew. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Amen. He was considered a pagan king, but he was a pagan king that served God. Now, isn't that incredible? Now, the message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, so he didn't eat any Panera or Publix pastries. He ate no meat, nor wine. Nothing came into his mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three weeks was fulfilled. In other words, he was on a Daniel fast for three weeks. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the river you, uh, that is called the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and I looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen was, whose waist was girded with gold euphos. His body was like braille, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like the torches of fire, his arms and feet like uh, burnished bronze in, co in color, and the sound of his words was like the voice of a multitude. Of course, we know who that was, Jesus. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. So he sees this vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but freaked out and took off. So they fled and hid themselves. Listen, God wants to bring you personal vision of who he is. Because this was Daniel's appointed time that he didn't miss. Many miss because they're too caught up in themselves in the world. In verse 5, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold of Euphos. And I want to read this again. And his body was like braille, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished uh, bronze in color, and the sound of the words were, of his voice was like a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw it, right? And everybody booked. In verse 8, Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained it in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength at all. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. 
And suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Many God doesn't hear. Not that he doesn't hear, he doesn't answer. Why? Because the heart isn't really set to understand. Understand what? Everything. The heart is not set to understand. And he said, and so when the heart's not set to understand, it means it's hardened. That means there's not humble there, there's pride there. And the word tells us God gives grace to the humble, but he rejects the proud. That's why many people don't hear God's voice or don't get prayers answered. Because they haven't come in a state of humbleness. Never go before the Lord and tell him you're his humble servant. Puke. You don't have to tell the Lord you're his humble servant. If you have to tell him you're his humble servant, then you ain't humble. Hello? You come to the Lord in repentance. You come to the Lord in arena that you can do nothing without him and that you are totally dependent on him for everything. Everything. And so the angel of the Lord comes to him to bring him a message. And it's powerful. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withheld, withstood me 21 days. That's a principality in heaven. And behold, Michael, the archangel, one of the chief priests, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the what? Latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. So he was coming to tell him to prepare him. It was almost like a rehearsal for what was going to come. So there would be a pointed time. So why? So it could be written, so it could be read, and so there could be preparation all the way down, all the way down to now. Now. King Cyrus, and a message of end time with Daniel a prophet. In other words, he was by a river, wasn't he? The interpretation comes through the set heart to understand and revelation to the humble. Only those that are humble. Why? Because this was a vision of the future that Daniel had to write down and prepare people that would read it. King Cyrus, again, was a pagan king of Persia. He was called the great conqueror of Babylon. In other words, he was the great conqueror of one world order. I'm going to say that again. He was the great conqueror of Babylon, so he was considered as the conqueror of one world order. He was one that was going to resist and expose it all. He freed the Jews and returned them to Jerusalem so that they could rebuild the temple. Sound familiar? We have a president called Trump. His name is, there's no coincidence, his name is Trump to fulfill the final feast of trumpets. He's considered the parallel of King Cyrus because he was a pagan. But now he's a servant of the Lord. He prays and gets counsel before he does things. He has men and women of God around him. He is all for the Jews and he is decreeing himself that he's going to help them build the temple and set an embassy of the United States in Jerusalem which is going to blow every... They're going to freak out. Oh, hallelujah. End time message is parallel of God's prophetic will and man's time to bring in a fulfillment and a release. 
Again, Donald Trump is to fulfill now the word of King Cyrus, preparing for the Feast of Trumpets. Does everybody understand this? Now is the time where it's being released. What Daniel was prophesying thousands of years ago, you and I are seeing it right now. The parallel time of God's will and man's time. Where Donald Trump is in position right now. That's why everyone hates him. And the reason for this is because he's exposing all Babylon, all one world order in the Democratic Republican parties, even in the world. He's a man that stands by himself with no support except from God. Does everybody get this? In Proverbs 29. Glory. Is everybody there? Amen. Again, I want you to grab hold because God is a God of justice and righteousness. He releases revelations to those who have a humble heart, contrite spirit, who are setting their hearts to understand. Oh, verse 18, what does it say? Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraints. In other words, they have no restraints over the soul or over the flesh. But happy is he who keeps the law. So where there is no revelations, people go astray. So if you're a person that hasn't had revelations, you've got no dominion over your soul or your flesh. Why? Because there's still pride there. There's still the self-will there. Keep missing God's appointed times. The only appointed times you have is carnal and flesh. Is everybody okay? Genesis chapter 1. Glory. Genesis chapter 1. In verse 13 and 14. Something like that in 15. So the evening and the morning were the third day. They were what day? Third day. I think that's kind of important, isn't it? It's called resurrection. Amen. So after the third day, okay, so this is the third day. The evening and the morning were the third day. Then, was it say? Then God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night and let them be for what? Signs and seasons and for days and years. In other words, sun, moon, stars are to be used as God's prophetic message to those able to interpret and understand signs, feasts, and seasons. Because signs, feasts, and seasons go together. And let them be for the lights in the firmament of heaven to give light on the earth. And it was so. This was the third day. Has everybody got it? The third day. Why? Just as why Jesus rose from the dead. So you and I could have correct interpretation and get in divine order for divine appointment times and scheduled times. Everything is predestined by the king. He doesn't change things. It's man that changes things. It's the enemy that tries to get man to change things, to move them out. Why? Because the enemy, remember, you got God's will and man's time. He's not bound by time. We are. These are, this also is associated not with just, you know, what you and I look at, lights and stars and moons and whatever. These are prophetic messages of seasons, but they're associated with Hebrew calendars, not our calendars. Amen. This is all Hebrew language and Hebrew camel, calendars. This is a Hebrew Bible Amen. translated from Greek to English. And boy, did they mess some stuff up when they translated it. 
That's why you got to have the Holy Spirit. In Leviticus 23, Glory. I can't tell you how many individual Christians have no idea about the Feast of the Lord or the understanding of the tabernacle, which is so, so important for biblical pre-scheduled events. Many are still walking out there not even knowing what's getting ready to happen. They're more concerned in prosperity and everything else, and there's nothing wrong with prosperity. God wants to bless our socks off, right? Amen. Praise God, we've got about 1,700 pair left. Glory, we bought a shipload of uh, <laughs> Nike socks. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Leviticus 23, in verse 1 and 2, would you read it? And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feast of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord, not of man. Amen. Which you shall proclaim to be a what? Holy convocations, these are my feasts. Now, the word convocation means rehearsal. Rehearsal. Does everybody get it? So these would be rehearsed for thousands of years to prepare mankind. God's Jewish people and Gentiles would come into the kingdom to prepare them for specific events that would be ready to be released because they are prophetic God's will with man's time. Holy convocations were rehearsals with God himself through, but Jesus would fulfill the feasts, signs, seasons, and appointments to those who are watching other than that, many people will miss it. In Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Is everybody there? I'll start at verse 1. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came testing Jesus, asked him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, pretenders. You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. What was he talking about? They couldn't discern the biblical calendar. And these were Jews because they were so caught up in their traditions and their laws. What did he say? He said, a, a wicked, wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet of Jonah. And he left them and departed. I'm sharing with you that we're about to see a sign from jo about the sign of Jonah. End time signs of Jonah. During the time of Jonah. Now, Nineveh was... All the sins had gone before, him, gone before the Lord. And the Lord was sending Jonah over to Nineveh to bring a message of repentance. Okay? Now, before Jonah got to Nineveh, of course, look what Jonah went through. Jesus was explaining about, I'm going to give you a sign, but the only sign would be from Jonah. Well, we know that the one sign would be that Jesus would be in the depths for three days. Jonah was in the belly for three days. Amen? But there's another sign that 
Not many talk about. And that was a total eclipse. Before Jonah got to Nineveh, all wickedness, all kinds of stuff broke out. I mean, there was all fornication, all kinds of things going on there. The sins had come up to the Lord, and he said, look at Jonah, you need to go over there. Of course, Jonah resisted, <laughs> and God put him in a belly's well for three days, and had to personally send him in a submarine made by his hand and bring him over to Nineveh. <laughs> that was the first submarine. <laughs> And I don't think it was yellow. <laughs> but before Jonah arrived at Nineveh, they had a total blackout, a total solar eclipse. Now, you got to understand, when people in those days saw a total eclipse, they realized judgment. They, ah! It's an omen to them. Whoa! Same thing when Jesus was walking on the water, freaked out the disciples. Why? Because that, to them, they used to say, there was a saying, if they saw a ghost walking on the water, that means everybody was going to die on the boat. So they freaked out. So before Jonah got to Nineveh, they had freaked out because of this total full eclipse. So by the time Jonah got there, they were ready to receive the message. What do we need to do? He said, repent. And the Lord relented from destroying Nineveh. Amen? Amen. So we got to understand that there is a message of repenting going on right now. Because in reality, this country is under judgment. It's under judgment of God. Why? Because of all the abortions, same-sex marriage, all of the stuff that's going on. People who call themselves Christians voting for politicians that approve of these things. And they're bringing a curse on themselves and have no idea. They said, if you voted for Obama, you better repent because the blood's on your hands of all those kids that have been aborted and the approval of all of these genders and all of this other stuff. Perversion. Oh, hallelujah. End time sign of Jonah was a total solar eclipse during an adulterous and wicked generation. Not only three days in a belly's well <laughs> was the present. See, for them it was the present. Jesus was going to be in, in earth, in, in hell and so forth, for three days. But there was a future event that was going to come also. Not only the sign that was already, ac uh, was being, uh, was already accomplished, that was being accomplished through Jonah, but that would come to the United States. Oh, Hallelujah. Again, pretenders won't see it. They won't understand these things. They'll miss it. These are heavenly signs. A totally eclipse again manifested before Jonah got there. And the message of repentance was received. It was received. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I guess we can call this America's Great Eclipse. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 3. In verse 1. It says to everything there is a what? Season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time 
of peace, but everything there is a time, a season, and a feast. Everything is associated with God's time, which is God's will, and hope to correlate it with man's time. Is everybody okay? This is all considered and coordinated with the Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew calendar is associated, it goes by moon. It's actually even coordinated with the sun. Seasons, feasts, and signs. These are divine appointments that are pre-scheduled. In Mar Matthew 27. Is everybody okay? This eclipse, total eclipse, will start tomorrow. It's a total eclipse. And Matthew 27 and verse 45. Is everybody there? Amen. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. It's called a total eclipse. Jesus was on the cross. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, uh, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who stood there, when they, they heard that, said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on the reed and offered it to him, but he didn't take it. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, yield up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked. Everyone say earthquake. earthquake. And the rocks were split. The graves were open, and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep during Jesus' ministry had come out of the graves after Jesus' resurrection was the fulfillment of Jonah. Amen? Jonah's prophecy, three days in the earth. But there was something else that happened that he fulfilled was the total eclipse, wasn't there? Amen. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, and they, were, they went into the city and appeared to many. Darkness, total eclipse, followed by an earthquake. Resurrection, three days. Does everybody see that? Amen. In Luke 21. Luke 21 and verse 25. You know that World War I started off with a total eclipse in 1914. And look at what escalated after that. In verse 25, let's speak it. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth... Distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. Is that happening? Much. Men's heart failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and let, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them about a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are ready, already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things beginning to happen, know that the kingdom of God is near. And assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you when? Unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass 
and to stand before the Son of Man. This is so powerful. Again, there are signs, season, and feasts. The earth is in distress. It is happening now. There is much distress here globally all over. August 21st, 2017, the total eclipse will pass over the center of the United States, starting from the west coast to the east coast. In fact, the first place that it's going to pass over is a place called Salem. Salem is also known as the word of Jerusalem. Coincidence? Oh, hallelujah. Now, the sun's diameter is 400 times larger than the moon. <laughs> but God is so cool, so you got to think about it. How can the moon cover the sun that's 400 times bigger? You know what he did? He made it 400 times the distance. So when the moon goes in front of the sun, there ain't going to be no light at all. Only dad can do that. So we're going to have a shadow that's going to come all the way from the west all the way through the center to the east. And, and it's going to end up in South Carolina, blocking everything. Now, here's another wild thing. The sun's temperature is 5,778, what they call Kelvin. I guess that's gazillions, I don't know. 5,778. The Hebrew calendar that's going to start, see, Monday is going to, is the, is the start, is the end of the Hebrew year. And the month is called Elu, E-L-U. So, the Hebrew number of the year is 5778, the same temperature of the surface of the sun, 5778. Coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> now, Nineveh had five things going on before judgment. They had plagues, they had civil war, they had military losses, they had earthquakes, and of course the eclipse. But God held back his judgment because they what? Repented. The sun will go dark in the United States exactly at the same time that the sun will set in Jerusalem. It's identical. Has everybody got it? This eclipse will start in the Hebrew calendar in the beginning of the month of Elu. Again, it was starting at the East Coast in the, in the place of Salem, uh, Salem to the South Carolina. And um, this is known for Alu, it's, it's known as 40 days of repentance. The new moon of Alu, which is, you know, for our, our, we're like a day or something off from the, uh, it, Jerusalem. Alu is the final month and the word alu means harvest or gathering. It is a message to repent. Now here's another kicker. Remember when Jesus, when Jesus was on the cross, it got dark and then the earthquake came, right? Well, this eclipse, the shadow, will travel over all the major earthquake zones. In fact, where it's traveling over is 95% of Trump's voters. <laughs> Why? Because it's representing the body of Christ who come to repentance. Uh, Alu. The first of Alu, there's a couple things that occurred during the first of Alu. Jonah brings the message of repentance to Nineveh. All right? Moses, in the first of Elu, goes up to Mount Sinai to repent for the Israelites for making the calf, the golden calf, after he destroys it, he goes back up for 40 more days. 40 days. 
And, and the first of Elu, Jesus goes in the wilderness for 40 days. So there's no coincidence, is there? Now, there's something else that's going to happen. This is going to lead up to 2000, I mean, uh, September 23rd, which is also going to fulfill something that's happened in the heavenlies, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. In verse 1. Now a great sign will appear in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she will cry out in labor and in pain to give birth. This sign, these are the aligning of the moons and, pl and the, uh, the uh, planets and stars that will bring this image on September 23rd of this year. So we're seeing a, a full eclipse that will proceed It'll go right before this whole event of this to be able to be seen. And I, I, th I don't know if it's going to be seen in the United States, but it will be seen in Israel. It will be able to be visually seen. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Now, are you ready for something else? Seven years from the first of Elu, when this total eclipse comes across the center of the United States, there will be another eclipse total eclipse that will, instead of running from west to east, will run from north to south or south to west. I don't know. I think it's north to south. So it's going to cause a cross or an X. Seven years, 2024, another total eclipse will come from the north, uh, uh, north and south. The other one was from west to east, causing a cross, and it's going to cross Two rivers, the Mississippi and Ohio River. And it will make an X, and this X is going to spot the new Madrid fault zone. It's a new one they found. We're an earthquake zone. It's going to cross right there. Now, does it mean that there's going to be an earthquake? We don't know. But prophetically, it sure likes things are going to happen. In fact, things in earthquakes didn't happen right afterward. I mean, right identically afterwards, but things happened later. I mean, think about this. Think about the Passover. You remember when the Lord told Moses, put the blood on the lentils of the doors, and the spirit of death will pass over the shadow of the spirit of death will pass over. Those covered by the blood. That's, you can only be covered by the blood through repentance. Only those with a humble heart and contrite spirit who truly are setting their hearts to understand and are humble. This is a pre of what's getting ready to happen. We are in the end times. It's no time to joke around. It's time to pray and be watchful. If you ain't right with God, get right with God. If your mouth is still causing you to sin, cut it off. Tie it in a bowl. Put a big binky in there. Put a guard over my lips, as this psalm says. Put a guard over my lips and my tongue and my mouth, my brain. We are in a time and season that is phenomenal right now. Is everybody okay? Amen. In First Peter chapter four. Verse twelve. Let's speak it, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial or challenges which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened. Remember, trials and challenges come to do two things. 
come to expose our impurities and expose our enemies. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On the other part, he's blaspheming, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if righteousness, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him and doing good to a faithful creator. Psalm 19. America's great eclipse. Hopefully it's America's great awakening. You know, to the other nations in the world, America to them is Babylon. In verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a what? Bridegroom coming out of his chamber. In other words, the heavens declare all the constellations. There's 12 constellations that tell the whole story of Jesus' birth, resurrection, and becoming king. Which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It's rising as one from one end of heaven and its circuit to another, and there is nothing hidden from its heat or its presence. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them... Your servant is warned. And in keeping them, there is what? Great reward. Who can understand his error? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me, and I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength. And my Redeemer. The heavens declare the glory. Why? There's a message in the heavenlies, in the signs, in the seasons, in the feasts. These are all predestined, pre scheduled, appointed times with events. You know, the rapture is the final sign. No one will be able to escape. Judgment after the rapture. It will be the end of grace. People can get saved, but they will still have to go through tribulation. They will starve or lose their heads or be killed or take the mark. So you don't want to miss the rapture. And that's the next feast to be fulfilled called the Feast of Trumpets. God warns us. You know, people don't realize what comes out of your mouth will either work for you or against you. You know what happened in this country? People don't realize. You know, you haven't heard of racism for, for a long time. There haven't been, I mean, you know, people really went through that already. It's, it was an old thing. 
But it was reunited, or I want to say ignited. And I'm going to share with you how it was ignited. Now, don't be offended, and I'm not racist or whatever, but I came out of somebody's mouth. After the President Obama was elected, he stepped out and he says, we have a new spirit that has entered into this country. It was called the spirit of bigotry. And from that point on, things began to escalate more and more. But again, it's fulfillment of prophecy. Why? He says, in the latter days, nation will rise against nation. That's ethnic group. The love of, for people will grow cold. There will be wars and rumors of wars. These will be known as the beginning of sorrows. Well, we're almost done with that. Basically, we probably are done with it. The next event is the rapture. That means if the rapture is the next event, we've got to go through three and a half years of tribulation, then three and a half years of great tribulation, which you and I are now counted for the great tribulation. But the tribulation, there'll be things going on, but there'll be a sense of prosperity. It'll be a false prosperity. It'll be a time in a season where things will grow and escalate and things will look great, but there'll be wars and rumors of wars. The things will start to come into place. Listen, there's already companies giving their employees chips in their hands. In fact, if you don't take it, you lose your job in some places. It's already going on. Google is the censor, the governing censor God, uh, the government uses to censor everything globally. They're shutting down many things. But it's amazing. They won't shut down the terrorist uh, messages that are on the internet, but they'll shut down Christian ones because they're anti-Christ. Remember, there's Christ or anti-Christ. There's no in-between. Now I want to close it at Ezekiel 33. Your phone is your censor. They censor you through your phones. They censor you through your TVs. They censor you through everything. There is no longer privacy. Unless you choose to go off the grid. Ezekiel 33. 33. First nine verses. Is everybody there? Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. Everyone say, I'm a watchman. You didn't get rescued. You just sweep floors. Amen? Or do just ministry. Or just be rescued to have a family. God rescued you to be his eyes and his ears. So that you can become watchmen. But if you're prideful, you can't. Because you'll be dull of hearing and dull of seeing. If you're still living for yourself. If you're still in the world and trying to live, live in both places, it ain't going to happen. Because you can't serve two masters, you will lose the fight. Verse 3, when the watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. So that means we got to hear the warning, don't we? He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be on, on himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees a sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, so I'm telling you I'm blowing the trumpet. And the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes away any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So everybody claimed to be a watchman, right? Well, hallelujah. 
So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. You have delivered your soul. So yes, we must not only be warned, but warn others. We are in a time and season of great, great things getting ready to happen. Uh, not only look at, not only things, things are chaotic all over. But in chaos, there is revival. There's a revival. So don't get caught in the chaos. Get caught up in the Lord. Because he's unlocking many things. Many things. I heard two words yesterday that were powerful to me. I'm not going to get into them. But when I sat and, I re and those two words came back to me, the Lord said, out of the mouth of two witnesses, it's established. And the Holy Spirit showed me that chains were being broken and locks were being taken off of things that were supposed to be coming to us you know that you have an inheritance that's been building up for years by Jesus. Treasures that he's been saving for you for years. And so many people have died never unlocking their inheritance. They're going home to get it. But what the heck good does it do you at home when you need it now? Because of dull of hearing, dull of seeing, and disobedience. People are missing their inheritance and the blessings are not coming. Listen, there's two ways. You'll either produce an Ishmael because you're doing it on your own or you'll produce an Isaac which is the promises of God. If God don't open that door and you do and you push to do your own thing instead of waiting for God and that timing to come about, you produce an Ishmael and you'll have to take care of it and take care of it and take care of it. It'll be nothing but a burden and a stumbling block. But if it's an Isaac, it's promises. It's blessings. And I'm telling you, God, I saw locks being busted off. Like a hammer from an angel busting off locks. And the doors were opening and things were getting ready to be poured out on his children. So positioning is everything, isn't it? Positioning is everything. So Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Let us not live for ourselves, but live for you. Bring us to the place where your will and I, our will, your time and our time are perfectly met for the appointed, predestined, scheduled time so that we may receive our inheritance and be awake of the events and things that are happening as watchmen for your glory. In Jesus' name.